This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 122, How to Improve Customer Retention, part one, by Neil Patel of neilpatel.com. And I'm Dan, I'm your host and narrator, and welcome back to another edition of Optimal Startup Daily, where I read to you from some of the best startup and entrepreneurial blogs out there. And real quick, I wanna thank Email Octopus. They give you the tools you need for email marketing, including customizable signup forms, autoresponders, and list segmentation. They're a user-friendly platform that's quick to get set up and easy to navigate. That's what we loved about it. And right now, Email Octopus is offering Optimal Startup Daily listeners 50% off of their first month. Visit emailoctopus.com OSD or quote code OSD50 at sign up. For 50% off your first month of email marketing, visit emailoctopus.com OSD or quote code OSD50 at sign up. Now, today's author is Neil Patel, and he usually writes articles that are more than 2,000 words, which is longer than a typical article that we like to read here on this show. So what I do is I break it up into two episodes so that we don't end up with episodes that are too long. And these articles may be a little bit longer, but they're full of great content. So with that, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. How to Improve Customer Retention, Part 1, by Neil Patel of neilpatel.com. Customer retention is something that you'll want to aim a lot of attention towards if you want your business to succeed in the long term. Once you get customer lifetime loyalty, you have hit the jackpot. Failure to work on your customer loyalty and improve customer retention plans will mean that your business is on a treadmill, trying to constantly win new customers. Losing so many existing clients can become quite expensive. After all, it costs five times more to acquire a new customer than it does to keep your existing customer base. In this post, we're going to take a look at what you can do to improve brand loyalty and customer retention within your business. We'll look at how you can use data from previous customers to improve customer retention in the future, but also what you can ask your existing customer base. This way, you will be able to grow your customer relationships improve customer lifetime, and inspire repeat purchases and brand loyalty. By the end of this post, you'll know more than most when it comes to getting customers' lifetime loyalty to your brand. Let's begin. Understand why existing customers are leaving in the first place. If you want to improve customer retention, it's a good idea to take a step back and figure out what is affecting your customer retention rate in the first place and why people are leaving. If you know the reasons that lead to dips in your customer retention rate, you can take steps to tackle those reasons and to improve your customer's experience of your brand. And if fewer people are leaving, you'll not only be improving customer retention rate, but also customer satisfaction and brand loyalty. So what can you do to figure out why people are leaving? One strategy you can adopt is to obtain customer feedback from those who have decided to no longer be customers. As soon as a customer decides to terminate their account, you can send them a personal email to ask them why they decided to end the relationship. Asking for customer feedback is a great way to ascertain if there are any customer complaints. And if there are, you can work on improving customer satisfaction to encourage repeat purchases and to improve customer retention rates. Now, not everyone will reply to your email with customer feedback but those that do will provide a performance indicator and some valuable insight into what you need to be doing better to improve your retention rate and how to improve your customer loyalty program. It's important that you acknowledge everything that is being said. You can't be in denial when reading the responses that you're receiving from former customers. To improve your customer satisfaction, it all starts with listening to what they have to say. Sure, criticism and negative customer feedback can be a hard thing to deal with, especially on social media. But if it helps to improve your company, all while improving the customer experience, you should welcome it as a performance indicator. You don't have to request customer feedback exclusively by email. You can also provide people with a survey too. Using a survey as a performance indicator, the customer that is canceling their account can easily select a reason that explains why they took the action that they did. This customer feedback can be used to adapt your customer loyalty program, to improve customer experience for new customers, and to generally improve customer satisfaction and encourage repeat purchases. Some companies immediately display a survey after someone cancels their account. Because the survey is presented right after the account is canceled, an honest response is more likely because the reason for canceling is fresh in the mind of the customer. 
This also shows that you care about their opinion, which works well in improving potential future customer relationships. Surveys also tend to work well as a performance indicator because they don't take too much effort on the customer's part. However, this can be a problem too because it will be hard to receive in-depth responses that provide you with actionable suggestions you can act upon to improve customer retention and to adapt your customer loyalty program. So, if you can, avoid relying exclusively on multiple choice responses and aim to also provide an option that allows customers to input comments using their own words too. You might even want to send existing loyal customers a survey that helps measure your net promoter score. This lets you know how many people would recommend your company to someone else. Word of mouth recommendations and having loyal customers as honest brand advocates is a great way to get new customers while keeping your retention rate high. You can create such a survey using SurveyMonkey. It's worth mentioning that you should try and split test your interactions with canceling customers. This is the original email Groove HQ sent to customers who decided to cancel their account. Quote, Hey Ted, thanks so much for giving Groove a try. I'm sorry that you didn't love it. I have a quick question that I hope you'll answer to help us make Groove better. Why did you cancel? Just reply to this email and let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. End quote. Groove HQ managed to double email response rates to 19% simply by changing their quick question to what made you cancel from why did you cancel? So as with all aspects of online marketing, make sure that you're willing to test your customer feedback emails if you want to achieve optimal response rates. Remember that for every customer complaint, there are on average 26 who remain silent regarding the same issue. Any discoveries you do make are likely going to apply to a fair few of your customers, meaning you need to act on them if you want to inspire customer loyalty, attract new customers, and keep your customers for years to come. Improve customer experience. Customer experience also plays a big role in repeat purchase and customer retention rates. Some research suggests that 68% of customers leave because of poor treatment and poor customer relationships. There are two parts to improving customer experience and customer satisfaction overall, to encourage repeat purchases and brand loyalty. The first includes taking the customer feedback you've received from existing customers through a satisfaction survey or other customer engagement and putting it into action. The second includes working on specific parts of your business that will impact customer retention and customer expectations, such as a customer loyalty program. I can't provide you with a lot of guidance related to the first part because I do not have access to feedback provided by your customers. However, I can highlight some of the key parts of your business that you need to be focusing on if you want to improve your customer retention strategy and inspire repeat business. The first element you need to focus on is the customer onboarding process. It is essential that during the customer onboarding process, you clearly provide new customers with the training that they need in order to use your product effectively. This will set the tone of your customer relationship and is an important part of your client retention strategy. If you can use the onboarding process to achieve some quick wins for the new customer, you'll increase the chances of them becoming long-term customers and gaining better brand loyalty and customer loyalty. The onboarding process doesn't need to be entirely digital. You can arrange a phone call with new customers during which you help them get started and answer any questions that they might have. This simple action can have a huge impact on your customer retention rates and can lead to those new customers becoming loyal customers. Make it clear that your customer loyalty program is focused on ensuring a happy customer experience and customer satisfaction. The second element that you need to focus on is customer service and a positive customer experience. This is similar to the onboarding process, though it applies to a longer timescale across the customer lifetime. Your customers want to feel respected and that you're listening to what they have to say. Customer service opportunities are your chance to make them feel that way. One key way that you can improve the customer experience and service within your company is by making your support team easily accessible. A great way to achieve this? Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Improve Customer Retention by Neil Patel of neilpatel.com. And thank you to Gusto. You know, instead of reading a script about Gusto's payroll and benefits, we wanted to tell you what small business owners are saying. You know, the people who use Gusto every day. Here's what one business says. 
With Gusto, I think of payroll as a 30-second job. The website is so friendly and a joy to use. Friendly payroll? You don't hear that every day. Amy from Utah says, I love Gusto so much. They do our medical, dental, vision, and life insurance, and it's so painless, it's like going to the spa. And we have great options and rates, even though we're a super small team. Health insurance? Like going to the spa. Wow. And here's what Amneet says about Gusto's support team. Whenever something comes up, I reach out and literally 24 hours later, they tell us what to do or assure us that they've already handled it for us. Smart technology and friendly humans? That's cool. Honestly, the list goes on. And right now, our listeners get three months free when they go to gusto.com slash OSD. Yep, three months of payroll, benefits admin, and more, totally free. Again, that's gusto.com slash OSD. G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OSD. And again, we'll hear the rest of Neil's post in tomorrow's show, so make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and you'll get tomorrow's episode automatically. Now, a little bit about Neil. He is an online marketing wizard. Even if you don't have an online business necessarily, you need a presence online and he can help you get more customers. He's all about generating more traffic and more sales and definitely proven as he's been named one of the top 10 marketers by Forbes. Entrepreneur Magazine says he created one of the 100 most brilliant companies. He was recognized as a top 100 entrepreneur under the age of 30 by President Obama and a top 100 entrepreneur under the age of 35 by the United Nations. So his content is always valuable and we're gonna hear more from him, of course, tomorrow. But that's it for today. I again thank you for listening and I'll catch you back here tomorrow for the Sunday show where I will wrap up today's post and where your optimal life awaits.